Hey everyone, Kachi Vest, back to another video for today. So Fiverr reported earnings before the market opens, actually much earlier than expected. At the time of making this video, earnings call still hasn't started. If there is something out of the ordinary that they mentioned during the call, I will post that in the pinned comment of this video. But so far, so good. Pre-market, the stock is up around 7 to 8%. Usually a good indicator. I already went through the earnings report, so I see... So I've seen the numbers and I like what I saw. Now I do want some answers during the call with regards to guidance, with regards to future growth, but all of that will be discussed in this video. So let's start. So first up, as always, they feature one of their sellers. This time it's someone called Michael Shagala. So he started on Fiverr in 2019. Now he grew his business to something extremely, extremely big. He's using everything that Fiverr has to offer, promoted gigs, seller plus, analytics, etc. In 2021, Michael averaged more than $50,000 per month on Fiverr's marketplace. To date, he has made over $700,000 on Fiverr with an average order price of $865. This is the power of Fiverr. This is what happens when, like he says here, when I walked away from a successful career in the corporate world, many people thought I was crazy. Today I work from home, increased my income, and spent more time with my family than ever. Joining Fiverr was the best career move I ever made. This is what Fiverr is all about. It's connecting people around the world to work together much better. Whether you think you can do a better job alone, maybe you're unappreciated in your workplace, just go try out the freelance market. You can try it out for free, right? You have the talent, just offer it on Fiverr, on the marketplace, and see how it goes. You don't have to quit your job, just have an extra side job. And if, if it performs like Michael's, then yes, you're freelance, you're alone, you can do whatever you want on your own, earn more, have more time for yourself, spend more time with friends and family. And this is exactly why I believe, and I think Fiverr is probably growing into my highest conviction holding, because the world is switching from a Everybody has to work nine to five to most people can work nine to five. If they want to work extra freelance, if you want to work from everywhere, Fiverr is here for that. Obviously there are other platforms as well, but I do think that Fiverr is perfectly positioned to take huge advantage of this shift. Now, before I jump into the key numbers, I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. The Motley Fool is a company that provides investing insight and stock recommendations for investors of all skill sets and risk levels. You all know how much I love researching new stocks and trying to find the next best investment. So I'm proud to partner with The Motley Fool to bring you 10 free stock picks from their popular product, Stock Advisor. Now, Stock Advisor has beat the market by more than 4x. So all you have to do is go to fool.com forward slash couch investor to get your free 10 stock picks now. All right, so here we have the financial overview for Q4 and for fiscal year 2021. Now I will switch from this quarter to what they projected last quarter so you can compare both. So this quarter they grew revenue 43% to $79.8 million. Gross margins is a bit lower than last quarter, but they mentioned that in the notes below. We're going to discuss that in a bit. Gap net loss, negative $19.5 million. Adjusted EBITDA, $8.9 million, which is higher than their guidance. And adjusted EBITDA margin higher as well, 11.1%. Active buyers grew 23% year over year to 4.2 million. Last quarter was 4.1 million. Spent per buyer keeps increasing $242, grew 18% year over year. And the take rate, this was extremely, extremely surprising to me, is now 29.2%. Last quarter was 28 point something, you will see it on the screen. So the take rate keeps on going higher and higher. It's very impressive to say the least. As for fiscal year 2021, revenue grew 57% year over year. They expected it to grow between 54 and 56% year over year. Gross margins still very good. Gap net loss, $65 million negative. Adjusted EBITDA higher than what they expected, $22.9 million. And then adjusted EBITDA margin, 7.7%. And as for financial outlook for next quarter and for fiscal year 2022. Now, first of all, it's already very, very nice to see that they are giving guidance. A lot of companies these days are like, we don't give guidance anymore because, well, seasonality, COVID period, tough comes, etc. But they keep giving guidance. 
They expect revenue to grow between 24 and 27 percent and adjusted EBITDA to come in between 1.5 million and 3.5 million. Now, the percentage wise growth here is because, well, last year Q1 was already an extremely good quarter, so comms are extremely difficult. They talk about that a bit later, they expect second half of the year to have better year over year growth. And for the fiscal year 2022, they expect to grow 26% at the midpoint and adjusted EBITDA to come in between 27 to $33 million. This is a quick overview of how they've performed in the last couple of years. This is exactly what you want to see, stairs on the way up. Still very, very early days for Fiverr, but as you can see, the results don't lie. And as always, this is the best representation of how their marketing dollars return to the business. So I'm sure you watched Sasha's video not so long ago about Fiverr, where he basically calculated every little dot and the space between them, then projected for future growth. So here you can see it as well. They say here, as of December 31st, 2021, revenue from the Q4 cohort amounted to 0.9 times their performance marketing investment in the same period. The cumulative revenue from the Q1 2017, so this one right here, has reached 4.8 times of our performance marketing investment for the first quarter of 2017, representing highly attractive five-year LTV to CAC. This is extremely positive for the long term. You don't want to see your investment die down after a year or two, but if you see that five years from now, maybe in the future, 10 years from now, keeps increasing and increasing, they keep coming back for more, extremely positive. They say actually right above this, you can see here the revenue composition by annual cohort. In 2021, repeat buyers contributed 59% of total revenue on their core marketplace up from 55% in 2020. And now with regards to Fiverr going up market, right? We've talked about this a couple of times. Fiverr started Fiverr, $5, you can get some gigs, but now they want to go after big businesses, big spending ticket, big spenders, etc. So they talk about that here. Spend per buyer on the platform increased 18% year over year as they continue to expand wallet share among our buyers. High value buyers, those with annual spend per buyer of over $500, continue to grow from the previous quarter and now represent 63% of the core marketplace. That's up from 62% in Q3. In fact, if we look into more granular buyer spending buckets, we find that the higher the spending bucket is, the faster growth we see. So you can see right here. In other words, the buyer growth is significantly skewed towards higher lifetime value buyers, which again is extremely positive because everybody thought Fiverr just small gigs, etc. But you can see it right here. Big spenders are the fastest growing buyer segment. And as we grow each and every year, every quarter, this will touch the bottom and the top line in a positive way. Obviously, it goes both ways. Big earners are the fastest growing seller segment as well. And that's what's great with Fiverr. They don't just look at ooh, how much money can the platform make. No. They look at both sides, the buyer side, the seller side, because without the seller side, you don't really have any successful platform, right? If you give all the tools needed for the seller to become better, to grow their business, everything else will take care of itself. Then they talk a bit more about the subscription, the Fiverr choice sellers, etc. They do talk about something that I've mentioned before, and that's the growth in interest for 3D related character animations, NFTs, if you need an avatar for a game, profile picture, etc. everybody goes to Fiverr. And this is something, this is obviously a positive thing for the business. This is something I mentioned in my past video about Fiverr is the fact that whenever there is a new technology coming out, something that everybody wants to use because it's maybe useful in a game, YouTube channel, social media, etc., and you're an amateur, you just go to Fiverr and you ask a professional. It's not always going to cost you a thousand dollars. No, just go on Fiverr, search NFT, search 3D character, VTuber, you name it, you can find for $50, $25, $100, thousands of dollars. So the choice is there. Fiverr is just perfectly positioned to take advantage of every new hype that's coming out there, especially in the digital age. Right, and last couple of things is touching on the specific numbers here. So active buyers already know that some people will say, but it's slowing down, just adding this 100,000 each quarter, that's not enough. But they're now focusing on higher lifetime value by targeting buyers with larger budgets. What's the point of adding another million buyers if they are just spending $5 each quarter? 
if you can add 100,000 buyers that spend $100 each quarter, makes more sense, right? Spend per buyer will basically follow that trend. Take rate, as I said, keeps going higher, which is, which is crazy because 29.2% is much higher than every other competitor out there. As of now, it still works. I'm sure in the future, if they grow into this huge platform, they might take a little bit less, but as of now, this is perfect. Now let's touch on the negative point I mentioned at the start of this video. You see here, gross margin has come down a little bit. So they say here, the decrease of gross margin was primarily driven by catch-up hiring for customer support teams. This is also the reasons they gave for guidance. So fine, we'll see what happens with guidance. At least we got a reason. Operating expenses as a percentage of revenue is down as well, which shows the improvement in operating leverage. And most surprisingly is that R&D stays flat, right? R&D still stays at around 20% of revenue. Sales and marketing, you would think that as the company grows, they probably increase sales and marketing, right? But no, no, no. Sales and marketing is down one year ago, 46%, this quarter, 43.4%. They continue to gain significant sales and marketing leverage during the quarter, driven by scale expansion, channel diversification, and strong execution, which demonstrates our ability to drive marketing efficiency towards our long-term target model. This is extremely crucial if they want to keep on growing without spending too much. So the path to profitability is there. And with regards to the higher net loss compared to last year, last year was 1.8, this quarter 19.5. So this was driven by increase in discount related finance expenses, issuance cost and amortization of the convertible notes. Adjusted EBITDA was $8.9 million or 11.1% of revenue compared to $4.6 million or 8.3%. The improved EBITDA margin was driven by increased revenue scale and improved leverage in operating expenses as mentioned before. And as for the financial outlook, we already went over these numbers before, but this is giving us a little bit more color. So given the unusual growth spikes we experienced during COVID quarters, we want to provide additional color on the cadence of the business outlook implied in our 2022 guidance. We expect tough comes in early part of 2021 would weigh on the growth rates of first part of 2022 and grow to accelerate in the second half of this year. They expect active buyers to grow in high signal digits and spend per buyer to grow in teens in terms of year over year growth rates for the fiscal year 2022. The take rate is expected to be steady with modest upside. So. They expect the take rate to be around 29% or maybe even more. Very, very positive if you ask me. On the expense size, a bit of the same. They expect some catch-up hiring for both customer support as well as product and engineering teams. We expect to continue improving sales and marketing as a percentage of revenue, which they've been doing. Overall, we expect to continue making progress towards our long-term adjusted EBITDA margin target of 25% while prioritizing growth and expanding our market share. So to me, this is another good quarter for Fiverr. I'm finishing this video right before the earnings call. Again, everything that gets mentioned that's important during the call, I will write in the pinned comment. To me, management here is key. The execution there is spot on. How they navigated throughout last year was incredible to see. The business is doing very, very well. If you're here for the short term, this business is not for you. If you're here for long term and long term extreme big gains, Fiverr is the way to go. I cannot praise this management team enough. Really, really spot on top class management. I love this business. I use Fiverr not as many times as I should, but to me, it's a great business. It's easy. If I need something, I just go on there, find the seller, talk to them, buy, happy, thank you, five star review, and I'm out. Do want to hear your opinion on Fiverr? Are you a seller? Are you a buyer? Shareholder? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you like this type of videos, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, maybe hit that subscribe button. As always, guys, take care, stay safe, and see you all in the next video. Bye bye.